the Concord Chamber Music Society begins the new year with a program of music featuring expanding ensembles as society members Wendy Putnam, Stephen Ansel, Owen Young, and Vitas Bakshish perform works by Prokofiev, Debussy, and Walton. Sunday, January 27th at 3 p.m. at the Concord Academy Performing Arts Center. The program begins with Prokofiev's tuneful sonata for violin and piano in D major. This work was written in September of 1942 while Prokofiev was in Central Asia, composing a film score for director Sergei Eisenstein's massive biography of the grand 16th century Russian Tsar Ivan the Terrible. The film's production schedule largely determined the composer's workflow. Prokofiev would go to the studio as necessary and watch segments of the film with Eisenstein, who would describe what was needed musically in terms of atmosphere and length. The composer would then return home and compose the requested segment. The logistics of shooting such a massive cinematic undertaking left Prokofiev with occasional stretches of free time, and with his usual Mozartian fluency, he composed his D major sonata during one of these intervals. Although he'd always worked quickly, his adoption of a simpler, more lyric style during the 1930s had only increased his facility, and the conventional structures and musical rhetoric of this sonata made its composition a happy affair. Recalling his years in Paris and his particular fondness for the playing of the great French flutist Georges Barère, Prokofiev originally cast this work as a flute sonata. But after its premiere in December of 1942 was greeted with indifference, the virtuoso violinist David Oistrakh suggested transcribing the sonata's flute part for the violin, and it's in this second version, which exploits the stringed instrument's wider expressive range, that the work became a staple of the repertoire. The ensemble enlarges to three members for a performance of music by the 18-year-old Claude Debussy, his piano trio in G major. This thoroughly amiable work has an intriguing history. It was written during the summer of 1880 at the behest of Tchaikovsky's legendary patron Nadezhda von Meck. While a connection between the great Russian master of musical romanticism and the primary exponent of French Impressionism seems unlikely on its face, it was, in fact, simply another example of the Russian aristocracy looking to France for its cultural needs, a tradition that dated back to the late 17th century and the reign of Peter the Great. Madame von Meck described the circumstance in a letter to a friend. Two days ago, a young pianist arrived from Paris, where he has just graduated from the conservatory with the first prize. I engaged him for the summer to give lessons to the children, accompany my daughter Julia singing, and play forehand piano with me. This young man plays well, his technique is brilliant, but he lacks any personal expression. He says he's 20, but he looks like he's 16. While the piano trio Debussy wrote that summer was long thought to have been destroyed or lost, it surfaced in two stages during the 1980s. First, an autograph score for the opening movement was found in Paris, along with a cello part for the work's final three movements. Shortly thereafter, the remainder of the score appeared among materials from the estate of Maurice du Mesnil, a pupil of the composer who died in 1974. Although the trio is clearly the work of an immensely gifted young composer in the early stages of developing his musical identity, its directness of expression reveals an aesthetic sensibility that fully accords with the pronouncement Debussy would make as a mature artist. The primary purpose of French music is to give pleasure. <laughs> The program closes with the performance of William Walton's fascinating piano quartet in D minor. To the extent that Walton's knighthood and long life conferred upon him an image of stuffy British rectitude, this notion is entirely belied by the eclecticism and vitality of his best music, qualities that are abundant in this work. Although it was completed when he was just 16, this quartet differs from Debussy's early trio in its embrace of the musical elements that would become so characteristic of its composer's mature style. It's clear that Walton attached a special value to this piece from 1919, a period during which he was regularly suppressing other compositional efforts. He listed it in his catalog of works, allowed it to be published, and even revised it on three occasions, the final time when he was in his 70s. 
pieces. Laid out in a conventional four movement structure, this piano quartet provides a compelling glimpse of the musical styles that had captured the young composer's imagination. His use of a five note motive played at the outset by the violin as a basis for thematic development and structural unity is classically Beethovenian, as is his inclusion of fugal writing. The violent, interruptive accents in the second and fourth movements echo the early Stravinsky and the rhythms of jazz, while the melodic writing in the slow movement evokes the characteristic English lyricism of Elgar and von Williams. The whole shows the unmistakable influence of Debussy, as Walton employs the French master's vivid harmonic vocabulary and textual astuteness with astonishing aplomb, creating a piece of unflagging color and vitality that's justifiably consistent considered his first important work. We hope you'll join us on Sunday, January 27th at 3 p.m. at the Concord Academy Performing Arts Center as the Concord Chamber Music Society presents a winter program that's sure to be an invigorating musical event. Mm -hmm.